In this grade 12 mathematical literacy video, we are looking at the May-June examination scope for your 2025 coming mid-examination. We are going to look at the scope specifically for paper 1. Of course, later on we will have a different scope for paper 2. So here we are starting with your paper 1. So this is everything that you can expect to find in your first paper as you are writing this coming examination period. So. We are going to go through the topics of the scopes looking at a past paper that we have already done before in this channel which is the may june examination paper from 2024 so we are going to use that same question paper for you to be able to see the examples of what you can expect of course later on we will also have another video with a different question paper we are going to do as many question papers as we can before the examination period starts so getting straight into it the first topic on your scope is the level one questions these are basically the basic maths questions like i said you will find them in your question one mostly and they will be worth about 20 percent of your question paper and these are going to be the basic questions based on the graphics that you see on your question paper so this is a good example of a such a question so we are seeing a bar graph there that talks about the usage of social medias and under it it's asking you different questions about the picture that you are seeing the first one being identify the type of a graph that is indicated above so this is the basic information that we expect you to already have and it's going to count again 20 percent of your question paper now just because these are basic questions doesn't mean that you should ignore them you will be surprised at how many people don't know basic things like rounding off you need to make sure that you check off those things you know how to convert things into percentage you are able to calculate a percentage increase or a percentage decrease between things you are able to talk about things like identify different types of graph you know a difference from a line graph to a bar graph to a histogram how does it differ from the two those are the basic things that we expect you to be able to know the difference between discrete and continuous data these are the things that you need to know if you are looking for the answers to the questions that you are seeing there by the way we have already done a question paper this question paper that i've just shown you the answers to that question are in that video so make sure that you go see that video in that video as well the question paper is going to be linked in this video also i'm going to link that same question paper so in case you download that question paper and you are looking for the answers the video is already up so make sure you go look for it the second topic on your question paper is going to be finance finance for your paper one is going to be the bulk of your question paper because there are different types of finance questions the very first kind of finance question you're going to meet is going to be an integrated finance question you can probably find it still in question one as you're looking at your 20 percent basic questions so in there they will just throw in a little bit one or two of finance questions so you need to be able to know it so basically the integrated finance questions are the basics of finance questions so this question in 1.2 is a good example of what that looks like so if you're looking for it again remember we have a video and in that video we have done the memo i actually show the memo for this exact same question so go look into that video so but basically it find the first type of finance question you can expect is an integrated finance question the second kind that you can expect is financial documents financial documents are very important so in your in your coming examination definitely there will be financial documents it will probably be one of those questions that we will also find in the addendum so make sure that you are able to um interpret your financial documents properly i see i've seen people who would take this type of a question for granted but i would advise you don't do that make sure that you take every single question that you are going to do seriously because if it was that simple it wouldn't be in there if it was if it didn't matter basically it wouldn't be in there so the fact that it is in there is it means that they need you to have this knowledge so make sure that you do actually have this knowledge so study your financial 
documents. The third type of a financial question is tariff systems. I hope you are aware that when you see a scope and it's just saying finance and you're not seeing tariff systems does not mean fine tariff systems are actually a part of finance of the finance topic in general if you are not aware so just because we're just saying finance don't say yes that means tariff systems are going to are not going to be there they will be there they are a finance question we have two videos on this on this channel on tariff systems make sure that you go watch those and then we also have taxable income i mean this one also goes without saying taxable income is a finance question or is a finance subtopic so you can see that under finance there is different kinds of questions that are going to be there and i can almost guarantee that all of them will be there and it's going to be the bulk of your question paper this is where the most amount of marks are going to come from in your paper one they are going to be from your finance so make sure that you are comfortable with your finance you know that taxable income is a long question Tariff systems is also a long question that has a lot of marks. So make sure that you are comfortable with both. Moving on to the third topic on your exam scope. That's going to be data handling. We have done two videos on data handling, meaning that there is a video that is a standalone topic on data handling on this channel. There is also data handling that is done in different question papers that we have done throughout this channel. But most importantly, or the most recent one is going to be the one from the May, June 2024 question paper that I was showing, just showing you. It's a 2024 question paper from last year, and it was in question three of that question paper we were dealing with data handling so it encompasses a lot of things when it comes to data handling including things like the bosk and whisker diagram and also dealing with basically the five point summary and your ranges and all of that it also discusses basic things like the difference between continuous and discrete data and we got to a we got to to um explain such things but one of the most important things that i think is tricky is when you are given the formula for mean and it was turned around and we had to basically solve for a missing variable using the formula and work it out as if we were solving for x so things like that are very important because you could say that you you know how to calculate mean you are comfortable with calculating mean but what if the mean was given and what you were looking for is the number of the items or you were given you are looking for the total value of the items how do you work that out you know so go make sure that you study those um to those questions in those videos and make sure that you repeat them until you are comfortable with your data handling in terms of both the individual questions as well as interpreting your box scan whisker diagram so make sure you cover those the fourth topic in your may june examination scope which you are probably going to get in your question four and question five is probabilities there are two ways in which you can expect to have a probabilities question. First of all, it can be a standalone question on probabilities where you are asked to calculate the probability of something and also look at a probability tree diagram, right? So the tree, the tree diagram is something that you can expect as well as calculating a probability of something. So make sure that you are comfortable with your knowledge on how you calculate a probability and how probabilities work in terms of a percentage scale, which is also important. Be able to talk about your probabilities in terms of percentages, in terms of decimals, as well as in terms of numbers. Basically, that is the theory side of it. And then also do your tree diagram, which is also important. The second way you will find a probability question is going to be an integrated probability question. As you can see with this question, it was a question that was dealing with something to do with movie tickets. The, it, it, it was a question that had a lot to do with finance side of dealing with with those uh, movie tickets but also now it was then developed into being a probability question so you will see the last question there in 4.2.2 it says what is the probability of a two-year-old going to the movies to watch the popular barbie movie so then in that sense that question will be integrated so make sure that you are comfortable with both the question as a standalone and as an integrated question so you can expect it to find it in the and just like that, this concludes the 
topics that you can expect to find in your major examination it is four topics they can be uh, integrated to make sure that you end up with a total of five questions now if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video or this subject in general we have a visual program that can help you with just that from anywhere in the country all you need is an email and a whatsapp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee this will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with this will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel for example ch subjects like history you will soon see our full subject list we will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together but what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full-time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your price quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject Subject, or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below